I'm Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has uh, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability on the right-hand side. You can get one month for $149. You get it six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of great information as you get his web, as you get his newsletter that's going to help you dissect and bisect the markets each and every day. Check it out at TFNN. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, what a difference a couple hundred miles makes. You are celebrating a nice spring. Down here, we're celebrating a heck of a hot summer. Yeah. Already. It's, it, I mean, it's 10 degrees difference, I think. I, between... Listen, I lived in Boca. I know. I know. The, yeah. yeah it, it's amazing, folks. And so if you look at Florida, and if, here's the finger going down. Steve's on this side down here, and we're on the middle up here. It's that good old Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, I think it's, that, it's, that's really it's, that kind it's, of the. It's just it, you know, it's funny when you actually when, we, when you look at the map in Florida of the United States, folks of Florida. I mean, Florida goes like way past Mexico on the way down. I mean, <laughs> it's wild, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So I thought we'd talk about uh, one of your favorite things today, gold. And uh, to, to do that here, um, I was over the weekend, I was looking at some of the uh, FRED data. I know you, you access the uh, FRED data, folks, that's the Federal Reserve Economic Data. And it's got a lot of cool charts and information. But so what I started taking a look at here, Tom, was uh, they had some information on inflation. And so just using their data, uh, what they've indicated is that they believe inflation began somewhere around the middle of 2021. So that's what I'm going to use here. OK. Um, you know, for, for our target, just based upon data. And Anybody can go back. They can grab this Fred chart. They can grab inflation rates uh, by different countries. You can see the U.S. kind of leading the charge there at 9.9 percent as of August 2022. Now, most academics believe that inflation was unleashed because of the record amount of money that was pumped into the system as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic response. And this is really one of uh, the, uh, the the Federal Reserve charts out here. It shows the consumer price index, uh, and it compares that against uh, corporate profits. Uh, after a tax out there. And, and many believe that gold is a hedge against inflation. So uh, so you've got folks that believe gold's a hedge against, a hedge against inflation. It uh, also that uh, gold will rise as the money supply rises. Well, on July 1st, 2021, so I'm taking the actual middle of 2021, gold was trading at $1,771 an ounce. As of maybe you know a couple hours ago, it was 1825. I think it's still right around the same level. It's only a three percent move. So I would have to say, if that's really when inflation started to kick in, so much for gold rising with inflation. Now, if we go back, so the very first time Tom that I purchased gold was 1979, and I, I happened to be, I had a, I uh, was in uh, my last year of uh, college, yeah, and I had an economics teacher, and this guy was a big gold bug. He also was, uh, uh, he worked for the Swiss government um, at one point in time, managing managing their assets. And in any event, really great guy. So he had convinced me to uh, take a, a little bit of money and go out and purchase some gold. He also convinced me to buy Hecla uh, mining way back then. And we did that. We went over to uh, Canada because we lived in Detroit. And, uh, and I purchased some Hecla shares. But I okay. also purchased some gold. So I, I'm very familiar with this time period. Uh, because on November 4th, 1970, and I'm sure you and many of others remember it, but that's when Iranian students took over the U.S. Embassy. Right. And they held diplomats for hostage. I think that went on into 2021 out there. So what I have marked on this chart for us is November 4th, 1979, when the Iranian students took over the U.S. Embassy. Now, during the next 51 trading sessions, gold rose by 128% out there. So um, to me, those charts suggest that there's a significant rise in gold. It has more to do with geopolitics than it does with a rise in money supply or inflation. So I just kind of leave that as a benchmark for us to think about. 
Here's a set of charts. You've seen these before in the past. This takes a look at gold priced in the major currencies. So on the very left-hand side, we have gold priced in dollars. Next to that, gold priced in euros, gold in yen, gold in pounds. So the first thing that I want people to understand is if you take a look at the green arrow out there, when gold has a substantial rally or any asset really, any significant asset, you need to see it rising in all the major currencies. And most certainly during the period of time where we take a look at those green arrows, that's what was that was that is what was taking place. What I would also note on these charts is the actual high of gold in the U.S. dollar out there, which came in at about uh, 2089, if my eyes aren't uh, misleading me. And what I've done is that exact same date when uh, gold <coughs> made its high in U.S. dollars, I've marked those exact same dates on gold price in euros, yen, and pounds. Now, when gold does top out, it will top out at roughly the same time in all major currencies. Sometimes it's right through the day. Well, we have gold and euros breaking through those highs and yen breaking through their highs out there back when the U.S. dollar had made its. So this tells me that the move in gold is not over. It has not topped. Now, I'm not saying that gold will not move lower. In fact, it closed below 18, 15, 50. I know you're taking a look at an A to B equals CD down pattern, and you've got a price projection on that. A close below 18, 15, 50 will negate a, a TD9 count pattern on Friday. So as you mentioned, newsletter subscribers gain access to a lot of different technical tools that we use to help us identify tops and bottoms. In this case here, this is a bottom pattern. And as long as price remains above 18, 15, 50, we should see some kind of bounce. Now, the other thing that I have on these charts here is I have uh, the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly time periods out there. So the weekly profile support is at 18, 16, 30. Folks, you should write this down on a pad of paper. So you've got 18, 15, 50 on a daily time frame. Support for the weekly is 18, 16, 30. Support for the uh, monthly is 18, 13, 20. I mean, we've got a cluster here, Tom. And then finally, we go to a really long-term chart, which would be the quarterly profile at 17, 96, 90. So I would say to folks, if we use 17, 96, 60 as the key price point to watch for gold, if we see price close below that, we're going to see gold continue to move lower. This chart here is a monthly chart for gold. And what I show here, Tom, uh, the black digits are consecutive months where the close of the prior month is uh, – the close of the current month is above the close of a prior month out there. And then the red digits are the exact opposite to the moves to the downside. So here if we take a look at what gold recently did, we had a three-month move higher out there. And right now we're trading below last month's open. To me, this tells me, if you take a look at the blue arrows on the bottom, typically we get these little two-bar or three-bar knee-jerk reaction lows before we see a bit of a rally inside of gold. So when I take a look at the bigger picture, this monthly chart says we could easily pull back for two to three months. That would just be something normal. And that says we should look for a low in March to April. Turns out, Tom, this is the 54-year seasonal chart for gold. Okay. It shows that we don't bottom until maybe about March. So the seasonal pattern is following along with uh, this monthly chart here of consecutive closes higher or lower. So this suggests that we uh, get what you're looking for is the completion, at least of that A to B equals CD pattern, and a market that moves lower for perhaps another month and a half or so. I like it. You know what I really like, Steve, too, folks, is that, you see, the run was extraordinary, folks, on the way up. I mean, we're talking about like four months. Oh. And then they, it gave it all back. And that's really cool because that's what really frustrates people. Do you know what I mean? Yes, In general. Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters to see the mastering probability right on the right hand side. Do it right now. Bing. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. You too, Tom. Take Thank care. you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.